What led to the tragic deaths of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra? This is the question that has haunted the city of San Antonio since their bodies were discovered in a parking lot on December 26. The chilling discovery sent shockwaves through the community. Two young lives abruptly ended in a hail of bullets. Savannah Soto, a vibrant young woman, and Matthew Guerra, her boyfriend, were found lifeless in a parking lot, their bodies bearing the brutal evidence of a violent end. Both had been shot in the head, a grim testament to the deadly intentions of their assailant or assailants. The San Antonio police were immediately on the scene, their presence a stark contrast to the usually quiet parking lot. They were confronted with a scene that bore all the hallmarks of a violent crime, raising immediate questions about who could have committed such a heinous act. The victims were identified as local residents. Savannah Soto, a woman full of life, and Matthew Guerra, known to his friends as a jovial character. The public's reaction was immediate and profound. The news of the gruesome discovery quickly spread across the city, sparking a wave of fear and uncertainty. Who were Savannah and Matthew? What had led them to this tragic end? These questions hung heavily in the air, as the city of San Antonio grappled with the shocking news. The police, for their part, sprung into action. They cordoned off the area, preserving the crime scene for a meticulous investigation. The bodies were carefully removed and transported for autopsy, a grim but necessary step to uncover the full extent of the violence inflicted upon them. As news of the crime spread, so did the speculation. Rumors swirled, theories were put forward, but the truth remained elusive. The only certainty was the tragic loss of two young lives and the urgent need to bring their killer or killers to justice. As the shock of the discovery wore off, the task of piecing together what happened began. The investigation kicked off immediately, with the police working tirelessly to piece together the events leading to Soto and Guerra's untimely deaths. A chilling discovery in a parking lot on the 26th of December set the wheels of justice in motion. Two bodies, identified as Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra, marked the beginning of a complex investigation. The first breakthrough came when the police unearthed a critical piece of evidence, a cell phone. This device would prove to be instrumental in leading the law enforcement officers to the suspects. It was a technological breadcrumb, hinting at the identity of the culprits and setting the stage for an impending arrest. As the investigation unfolded, information from the victims' families began to paint a more detailed picture. They revealed that Guerra had been involved in drug-selling activities, using his cell phone and social media as platforms for his illicit trade. This knowledge added a new dimension to the case, hinting at possible motives and a dangerous backdrop of criminal behavior. But it wasn't just the cell phone that pointed toward the suspects. The police had another lead. The victims' families also spoke of previous attempts to rob Guerra. This information suggested that the motive behind the gruesome act might not have been a random act of violence, but rather a premeditated crime. While the police were piecing together these clues, they were also working closely with the Bexar County District Attorney's Office. The situation was complicated by the tragic fact that Soto was pregnant at the time of her death. The unborn child, named Fabian, added another layer of sorrow to the already tragic event, and further charges may be considered. The investigation was rapidly evolving, with every new piece of information bringing the police closer to the culprits. The foundation for a case was being built, piece by piece, as the police pursued justice for Savannah, Matthew and their unborn child. With the suspects now in their sights, the police were closing in. The breakthrough in the case came with the arrest of a father and son, Christopher and Ramon Preciado. In the early days of the new year, the San Antonio police brought in two suspects in connection with the deaths of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. 19-year-old Christopher Preciado and his father, 53-year-old Ramon Preciado, were taken into custody. The charges were serious. Christopher was charged with capital murder, abuse of a corpse, and altering, destroying, or concealing a human corpse. His father, Ramon, faced charges of abuse of a corpse and altering, destroying, or concealing a human corpse. These arrests followed the discovery of Soto and Guerra's bodies in a parking lot on the day after Christmas. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, Christopher Preciado claimed self-defense, stating that Guerra had pointed a gun at him, leading to the fatal shootings of both victims. The case against the Preciados was built on a combination of evidence, including a critical piece of technology, a cell phone. 
This phone, discovered at the crime scene, led the police to the suspects. Other pieces of evidence included security footage from the Colinas at medical apartments, which showed a meeting between the victims and the Preciados. Furthermore, the victims' phones revealed a search for a location near the Preciados' home. Ramon Preciado, however, provided an inconsistent account of the events that transpired, admitting to driving the pickup truck to the apartment complex where the bodies were discovered. He also confessed to assisting his son in hiding the bodies. In the Preciado's home, the police found what they believed to be the gun used in the killings. For the victims' families and the community, the arrests of the Preciados provided some relief, yet the case was far from closed. But even with the suspects in custody, there were still more questions than answers. The arrest of the Preciados brought some relief to the community, but it was just the beginning of a long road to justice. The investigation into the tragic deaths of Savannah Soto, her boyfriend Matthew Guerra, and their unborn child Fabian, is far from over. Detectives continue to gather evidence, tying up loose ends, and unearthing every detail surrounding this chilling crime. The case is complex, with multiple charges brought against the father and son duo, Christopher and Ramon Preciado. Christopher, the younger Preciado, is facing capital murder charges, among others. The nature of this crime, the alleged cold-blooded killing of a young couple, and the fact that Savannah was pregnant, adds another layer to an already complicated case. The police are collaborating with the Bexar County District Attorney's Office to determine if further charges related to the death of the unborn child, Fabian, are warranted. Meanwhile, the public watches, their hearts heavy with the weight of the tragedy. The community reels, grappling with a mix of emotions, shock, grief, and a deep-seated desire for justice. The bonds set for the Preciados reflect the gravity of their alleged crimes. Two million dollars for Christopher, and six hundred thousand dollars for Ramon, numbers that echo in the quiet aftermath of the arrests. The possibility of the death penalty also looms large. The Bexar County Criminal District Attorney has commended the police for their dedication and hard work, stating that the District Attorney's Office will review the case and consider seeking the death penalty if the Preciados are indicted. In the midst of this, the families of Savannah and Matthew are left to mourn their losses, their grief exacerbated by the harsh spotlight of public attention. They find themselves at the center of a tragic narrative, their personal pain laid bare for all to see. As the case continues to unfold, the community, the families, and the police all seek justice for Savannah, Matthew, and the unborn child, Fabian. As we stand today, the case is far from closed. The tragic deaths of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra, including the unborn child named Fabian, have left an indelible mark on the community. The suspects, father and son duo, Ramon and Christopher Preciado, are behind bars, their bonds set at $600,000 and $2 million respectively. However, the investigation is still very much active, with the San Antonio Police Department working tirelessly to tie up loose ends. The Bexar County District Attorney's Office is also playing a crucial role, reviewing the case meticulously and considering seeking the death penalty if indictments are made. The arrests have brought a sense of relief to the community, but the quest for justice is far from over. In the coming weeks and months, we can expect further developments as detectives continue to gather evidence and the legal proceedings unfold. And so, we continue to ask, what led to the tragic deaths of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra? As the investigation continues, we hope to find those answers.